Just scrolling through one of my favorite websites, Sailing Texas, looking at some boats for sale. Came across an interesting one. It's a Compact 23 you may know. It's SV Hideaway from the YouTube channel of the same name. They are just a real testament of how much fun and adventure you can have on this boat for a reasonable amount of money. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today I find myself in beautiful Kansas City, Missouri. I came here all the way from Houston to meet a man named Chris. He just set up the Facebook Compact 23 Owners Forum here to meet him and check out his boat. So let's get on the road and see what we can see. Just south of downtown and south of the Country Club Plaza. Really an interesting city. So Chris is an owner of a Compact 23 and a Compact 16. And uh, if you know me, you know how much I love the 16 and the 23. I've owned them both. So this guy and me are probably gonna have a lot in common. So well, here's Chris. Hi, howdy. <laughs> he's the guy who brought me all the way from Texas to meet him and uh, check out his boat. And he's got the Compact 23 we see here. And I think I saw the 16 back there. Two of my favorite boats. Thousand views. Yeah, well, it's getting, yeah, it's getting there for not bad for a little channel with 500 subs. I love having my boat in a slip at the marina, but there are definitely times I'd love to have it at my house. Great to see it out of the water on the trailer. I wish I had a trailer for mine. I said to my wife, I said he's eventually going to want to get rid of that, and when he does, we're going to buy it. Right. Well, it wasn't too many months later, and the Jacomo Yacht Club posted and said, "Hey, whoever's boat this is, uh, it's uh, broken off its mooring." Ooh. And there it was, just kind of drifting oh, around really? in the mooring field. And at that point, he had it there all year, and he never touched it. He put it on the ball there. He never did. It. Meet sailing vessel Connie Marie, originally from Clearwater, Florida. She's 32 years old and a Mark III, but considers herself a 10. She likes all points of sail, but she really enjoys long, broad reaches along the beach. And is looking for someone to make her feel young again and give her a good home. So I said, hey, hey if you don't want it, I'll buy it. So he's, okay, you can buy it. So I bought it. Can I ask you how much you paid yeah, for it? I paid 7000 for okay, it. It was probably, seems... probably a bit too much, and you'll see why. <laughs> But you know, it is a it's a it's a Mark III. Oh, it's so a Mark III. And didn't require a trip to Texas or Florida. Right. So that was worth something. And he had a trailer. Well, the trailer that he, he sold with it, this one, I actually kind of like it, but it's not the trailer that he bought it on. Well, as you can see, these are lowered all the way down. And you had to stack a few boards to it took all day. Right. to get it out of the water. So that was an issue and uh, he, he didn't have it all the way finished. So, you know, the tabs were on here and he said, just add the bracing, mm -hmm. lay some new. My friend, the skies are bright. I see orange light. Here we go, what, uh, that's the speed. Uh, over the water, here we got, and I think there's another one somewhere. Here are three through holes that Chris would probably rather not have in his boat. I imagine he'll probably work on getting them filled. The first one is a speed indicator, the paddle wheel style. And I believe the second two are the inlet and outlet for the head. No, no, just those three. So he started doing stuff. Right. And uh, I don't want to carry around a tank full of... All right, before we climb aboard, let's take a look at some sailboat data. The number that always jumps out at me on this particular sailboat is the ballast to displacement number at 44.67%, the highest of any boat I could find. The second highest is the Cape Dory 22 at 43.75%. And third place of the boats that I looked at goes to the Dana 24, which keeps 40% of its displacement in ballast. The ballast to displacement number gives you a good idea of how well your boat can stand up to its own sails. I've never had a furler. Me so. neither. Well, that... I do now, but yeah. this is it. Well, the foil was broken and twisted. And so on the, uh, on the starboard side, another one kind of just stuffed down there. And he's like, well, this one's broken. So here you can have this one. Like, oh, okay. Uh, I put a nice downhaul on my 16 for the for the for sale, and I got a nice you know I get the jib bag and everything. I I just might I just might do that. <laughs> 
Here's a cool way I like to run my jib downhaul. I'd run a line along the deck out to a double block at the jib tack, and then I'd run it up the uh, forestay to a single block at the jib head, then back down the forestay to that double block at the jib tack, then out the foot of the jib to a single block at the clue, and then I'd dead end it back at the tack. So with a single pull of the line, I could lower the jib onto the deck and then release the jib sheet and continue pulling the down haul to bunch the sail up at the bow nice and neat and tight. He also put an extra four stay in. He's like, well, if you want to turn it into a cutter, you could do that. Reveal here. Well, Let's great reveal. Chris purchased this boat three or four months ago, and now that spring is on the way, the refit is about to begin. Okay, so here we are down below. Uh, the first thing that I noticed is that they have redesigned the settee cabinet. Here's a shot of the cabinet in my Mark I so that you can see the difference. The upside of this design is that the settee is wider. The cushion has room to go all the way to the hull, so it's more space for your shoulder to slide underneath of the cabinet. The downside of this cabinet is that it looks good, but you can't actually store much in it. The access is terrible. This newer cabinet design offers a lot more storage, but you lose that much needed cushion space. And I'm not sure where your legs would go if you sleep in the settee with the plumbing in the sink the way it is. I really liked how they did it on my J24. A lot of shoulder room and a wide cushion and then tons of storage up top. Best of both worlds. The slide out hideaway that sink. That one, you can barely move it. Chris said like with a wooden drawer, he could apply some dry bar soap to make it slide better. Now, why do we not have that beautiful compact woodwork up here? Yeah. There was literally a plant growing out. It was oh, really? so rotten. I believe this interior wood can be purchased. Hutchins offers pretty much every part of this boat for sale. They weigh a ton, but they just leaked. Four out of six of my port lights leak, but it's just where the gasket is, so I think that'd be kind of a fun and quick job for me. So I like this a lot better. I'm gonna snoop around uh, Chris's boat a little bit and see what I can find. Okay, we got some a nice shelf back there. Tons of storage. And it looks like he has a 110 system in here. Then on this side, he's got the um, galley stove. And he was just telling me that he was gonna start using it's called Everclear. the alcohol Everclear to burn in here. I thought that was very interesting. I've never heard that before. And what else is different? I really like how uh, this uh, bulkhead to the V-berth has been cut away. Uh, better airflow and it just gives the boat a bigger... I don't even know if I like the idea of a two cabin layout in a little 23 foot sailboat. Instead of that bulkhead dividing things up so badly, I'd rather have a compression post with a table wrapped around it and the front V-berth used for storage and a settee and then down the port side have the galley and down the starboard side have a sleeping settee. That would be the ideal setup for me. Bigger feeling. Chris and I were just talking about how uh, Compaq has integrated this um, ceiling correction overhead beadboard. It's actually part of the structure of the boat. And we were talking about how Compaq doesn't core the deck with wood. It's a synthetic core, which will never rot. I read somewhere where the old Compaq 23s had four decks and the new ones have foam, but I'm trying to find more information on that. Which is a big advantage because that will be the death of a sailboat when the uh, deck rots. So you're not going to have any soft spots on the deck of a Compact 23 and that's, that's just a deal maker right there. The only wood on the deck of a Compact 23 is under the mast step right here. And there's a little piece of wood at the bow there's wood underneath uh -huh. and if you can protect that from getting wet then the boat is literally going to last forever my compact 23 has held up better than i have you got the anchor locker up there which i'd love to look inside and see what we can find oh okay that's the plumbing for the old head then uh four of that is your anchor road storage then you have your deck fill probably has his fresh water right down here 
That's where the tank might go for the fresh water. Or do you have a fresh water tank? Sometimes when you buy a new boat, you have to try to get into the mind of the previous owner to try to figure out where he was going with things. No, I don't think so. He hadn't got it to that yet. Apparently he was gonna do some I don't know, some really serious sailing, the, the previous guy, uh, which is why he started adding all these through holes and things, and uh, but he never did finish it. Um, also added a bunch of electric stuff into uh, uh, down here on the side uh, of the cockpit. So, and, and I haven't even messed with it. He's got two batteries in there and a, and a bunch of panels and things. And how long ago did you buy the boat? Uh, let's see, would have been around, I think, September oh, or so. Oh, so you're and a new owner, aren't you? A relatively new owner, yeah. and I said to myself, because when I got it, I had the Bayfield 25 and the Compact 16. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, not just to myself, but to also other people in the family, that I will not touch this boat <laughs> until I get rid of the other two. So the Bayfield is gone, except for its ballast iron ballast of a Bayfield 25 and uh, the compact 16 is almost ready to put up for sale I've got a few little things I almost finished it before the cold snap came hmm. uh, but so we, we've got a few things left on that do you have the wood for the side inside your garage or something uh, or? I have the I have the old wood mm -hmm. um, I haven't gotten new wood and what I think I might do rather than putting new wood is I might just paint it I get the primer from total boat and the uh, and the build, white bilge paint. Um, so I might do that uh, ferret first. Right. And then put the lights back in. But, you know, you, you could just order that from, from Compact. I think anywhere water could come in in my boat, it comes in yeah. a little dripping. Well, see, when, <laughs> so I, when I first got the 16, that was the case with that too. And I just, I just can't, it drives me nuts. I can't have it. I know. I took the rubber, you replaced your rubber. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's expensive. So, so yeah, I just, I took mine off and I, put a turn of bond in there and butyl tape and uh, it doesn't leak, not a single, not a single drip. The hatch is nice and yeah. boy, it is amazing coming from a boat that doesn't have one because when you're on a mooring, uh, you point into the wind and you, and it, no matter where you are, it funnels the air and it's fabulous. Yeah, this is nice. I have a solid, just fiberglass, Yeah, no light, but it is nice to get more light. It's definitely more airy in this boat than mine. This boat, had so many mud daubers because the guy Me literally too. put it on his mooring ball and left it there. And there were just so many places for it to get in, like where mm -hmm. the anchor road comes in. There wasn't, there was not, there was no lid on it. There was nothing. They were just coming in like crazy. So you can see the remnants of them. I have to go. Yes, them I had them and everywhere. Sc and scrub them. That was so satisfying to get rid of those mud daubers. They were, yeah, they were, they were everywhere. And uh, the, uh, the compass was a disaster, so I bought an, a brand new one, the same one that was in there. A, uh, uh, I forget, uh, Contest is the, uh, is the model. I forget the brand name. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a common brand name. But my gosh, they're expensive. Are they? yeah. Holy mackerel. Luckily, the compass on my boat is the one thing I don't have to replace. But it, it does is. leak. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> it leaks like a sieve. Yeah. yeah, I've got a lot of deck sealing to do on my boat. But that's not too hard. I don't know if you'll be able to get this out, but when it's all cleaned up, yeah, my friends. Uh, but I think when it's all cleaned up, it should be, it should be great. Yeah, I mean, you just got the boat, so uh, yeah, the fun begins now. Yeah, and I, I, I'm not like a super handy person, but uh, but I do kind of enjoy. You know, I get it done. Yeah, and if it's too complicated, I maybe get some help. I would love to have my boat on a trailer at my house. Yeah, where all my great. tools are it's i mean it's the way to go but i don't yeah. think that's in the cards for my little boat i've already i'm out of budget on my boat if you've seen i, I saw your twelve thousand dollars on a stupid thing <laughs> i never it never will add up what i spent on the 16. i do not right no, there's no there, you, no, you don't yeah. want to know it's, i did quite a w bit of work on my 16 when i sold it the thing was perfect oh you had a 16 i well? did yeah oh, i did right. yeah in one of my videos i show a picture of it and then it kind of morphs into the 23 oh, to kind of show the uh similarities of the design that clark mills had yeah but no, I loved my 16. I actually converted it to a uh, trolling motor that I shoved through a through hole, 
up through to a fiberglass pipe and cut off oh. the head of the trolling motor so it's all under the water and oh, wow. quiet. like a like a, a, like a pod it's like a pod oh on, i see okay. yeah it's yeah. really, really cool pod drive so uh -huh. yeah it's like a pod wow. drive wow. yeah i'll have to check out your 16 too i'm a big fan of that boat you know if it was just me I would probably maybe just keep it. It's really tight, even for one person. It is tight, yeah. If you want to bring some kids along, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's just just too small. Yeah, my boat I'm pretty much just setting up for one person because uh, people say they're gonna go sailing with you, but actually getting people out there, maybe two or three times a year, but most of the time it's just myself. So uh, yeah. that's kind of been my experience too. Right, but. Uh, I have to maintain the illusion that the kids are uh, uh -huh, right. always welcome right and that keeps me in good graces with other people in yeah. the family it is yeah. a great joy having <laughs> your children out on your boat it, and teaching them uh it is you know how to solo sail and gives them some independence for sure and some... shockingly my wife actually enjoyed sailing and uh, she came out on the 16 a few times and um when there was wind uh she she said it's it's exhilarating and uh, so that was great. I took my girlfriend sailing one time and she was so hands off. She didn't even want to help me dock the boat. I just said stay oh. down below. You know, oh. <laughs> she was not real comfortable <laughs> yeah. with it. So yeah, you know you don't want to pressure them too much. You'll never get them back out on the never water if you them scare back. them or anything. So yeah, I think yeah. there are actually books about this. Oh People yeah, people have written on how to convince your spouse to go <laughs> sailing. Yeah, and mine was. I would say a lot rougher than yours when I bought it, but uh, like sailboats, as long as the hull is good and the deck's good, the possibilities are endless what you can do with these boats. They're, there's never a reason to throw one a compact away. So he's done some things here. Shower. That's an interesting right. setup. It's uh, Yeah, I wouldn't have done it this way uh, yeah. personally, but there it is. Yeah. And, um, oh, okay, so he does have a little cover he's got a big... What's that cover for? Is that just... I think that's just to keep water from splashing on okay, it, but yeah. I mean, like I said, I think I'm going to have to move that to make it i like the way that chris works on boats he puts a lot of thought into everything he does i really look forward to seeing how this 23 turns out mine are garbage there's like no click to them so you got your anchor light you got your vhf you're all set up here yeah i came with a little vhf um it was pretty old he said he'd mainly rely on his handheld vhf radio more diesel which if i put it in I don't think I'd do it myself. Those guys down in North Carolina, Sailboat Richlands, have you mm -hmm. heard of them? No. They're a compact dealer in North Carolina. They do diesel conversions on compacts. They're, they, they oh, have really? A, they have a, a great, it's hard to find anything on their on their blog, but it's endless, endless. Really? And you can just see like the folk wisdom of decades of working on compacts. They Sailboat Richlands, hard to navigate the site. The guys are great. I just figured if I put the diesel in, I'm going to tow it down there and give them some money and say, here, put it in. One more question. How long ago did you set up the Facebook uh, forum for Compact 23? Uh, that was just this week. Oh, was it? Okay. Cool, yeah, cool. that's why it has a grand total of three people in it okay. uh, so far. Yeah, uh, the 16 has two different Facebook groups. Facebook groups for uh, cruisers, you know, the Compact Cruisers group, and there's a comp Compact Sailboat Owners group and a Compact Yacht Owners group. And they're all great, but the 23, I just think, is so uniquely fabulous. It deserves a page. It and definitely does. I'm glad you started it. And you got I wish I would have thought of it, but this guy beat me to what? it. So. I, I wish you would have too. <laughs> I'm new to Facebook. I, I'm, I'm old. I'm not yeah, hipped all that stuff. You got people making videos. You know, you're doing videos. Uh, Randy Angle with uh, the Boatnik. Mm -hmm. He's got a 16 and a 23. Yeah, great channel. Uh, and then there's that lady in Iowa. I think. Yeah, Shell. It's uh, Passages from the, from the Heart. She invited me to be on her podcast, and we will definitely set up a time to do a podcast uh, interview over the phone. I look forward to doing that. Yeah, she's that's on right. her second 23. That's she, right. I, that's... I left a comment on one of her videos, and she said, I think she said, or I got the impression that, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, it was maybe just a bit much. Um, she, she just didn't want to deal with the diesel. So, um, for one reason or another, that was the impression I got. So, yeah, that's she understandable. Makes, she makes nice you know. videos, yeah. But both of her both of her 23s are really nice. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. And she has that very helpful husband along. That's great, the... That they're a sailing couple. I mean, you don't see that too often. No, you don't. That's really what I'm in search of. If you're looking for a Compact 16, this one may be on the market soon. This is a Mark II with a lot of good upgrades. 
This is nice. So, yeah, this boat originally came, well, uh, it was uh, North Carolina, I think, and then Texas, and then Tulsa, and now here. And uh, that's the Ruddercraft foiling rudder. Which is it? I've never helps, seen one in person. It, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not a boat expert. And I would look at that and think, well, what the heck's that going to do? But it does a lot. I it really thought a, it would have came to a finer point yeah. there, but what do I know, you know? Yeah, uh, it made a it makes a big difference in, yeah, uh, in upwind performance. I, it's totally worth it. And I will be getting one for the 23. Now, does this one have a pin to lock it down? Uh, no. Okay. No, because it would be right here. I'm pretty yeah. sure the 23 does. Yeah. And so what you've got is this. It, it doesn't really ever seem to come loose, but I did drill Mine a hole through that bolt. That's a good you idea. You don't want that. You don't want that being a problem. So this is just a smaller version of the 23. I had the first v original uh, version of my, my 16 without the bow sprit, but it should be nice to have a bow sprit. It is nice, yeah, this is a Mark II. The Mark II came with the addition of the bow sprit and they reduced the main sill from 72 square feet to 65. Fun boats. Yep. And no bolt-on keels, all integrated. Yeah, all encapsulated and uh, in, good, in good shape. Yeah, encapsulated, yep, awesome. So I did this, um, I, I added this to hold the mast. And mm -hmm. then uh, I nice added, uh, these came from Compass, the, um, uh, the lifelines, and normally the, nice and the 16 just has one, but I, I put two. Um, yeah. And they really do give you a, a sense of security. Exactly. Uh, especially if you're on your, if it's windy and you, you're crawling out there to fiddle with your anchor or your mm -hmm. foresail, it, it's kind of nice. Now, and, is this original? No, I made okay, it I thought so, yeah. Actually, yeah. Um, and my friend that helped works. me sort of machine this uh, starboard, uh, well, the King Starboard, that stuff's called. Huh. Uh, work really. We also made the companionway hatch out of the same material. Yeah, that's nice. And uh, I, I really upgraded a, a lot of things. These Another thing with the com, uh, the 16, you might know, is uh, if you're a little, got a little extra weight, uh, you can have some foot flooding. I've had that on my 23 in heavy seas. Really? Wow. Yes. Yeah. So these, um, uh, of course, when they get leaves in them, it's a problem. You got to flush them out. But yeah, the ball those, scuppers. Those did. Uh, those those work great. I haven't been super impressed with the tiller clutch, but I think maybe I try to hold it too taut, and um, maybe needs a little bit of play. I did refinish the tiller, and um, yep, yep, so yep. it was all coming apart and putting the splinters in my hands. But the tiller clutch, and so you run that back to this little mm -hmm. guy. Probably There's seen how I nice. steer my boat from the bow. I saw that's a brilliant little system. <laughs> yeah, and this I, I added mainly because I have a solar panel that goes on here. Cool. And then the solar panel plugs into this outlet and goes forward and charges. Um, you have an EcoFlow. I've uh -huh. a, a Blue Eddy. Same um, deal. I took out the electrical system and, and just run the whole thing off the Blue Eddy. That's kind of what I'm doing. I love the idea of a power station on a boat, a portable power station. Um, I just have never liked the idea of leaving my boat unattended, full of uh, expensive electronics. I met a guy one time and he spent years outfitting his boat and uh, he uh, lived a couple hours away from it and he didn't get there as often as he wanted to, but he was building and building over years, getting it ready to go cruising. And he showed up one time, the boat had been broken into and he'd gotten cleaned out. I remember talking to him and he was so crushed. He ended up selling his boat and just gave up on the dream altogether. I hated hearing that story. So I've always uh, kept that in the back of my mind and always wanted to keep my boat minimalistic. That's how I am anyway. So it's natural for me. And I just love the idea of removing everything and uh, having all my... Uh, all my gear multifunctional where I can take it camping with me. So that's the direction I'm going with my little boat. Keep it simple, everything portable and removable. They don't sell a cap for this compass. To make one out of a piece of pipe from the, the old Home Depot. Oh, perfect fit. A little tape. A lot of people buy these Hawkeye $100 depth sounders. That's probably what I'm gonna go with. Works great, works great. You shoot, and, shooting through the hole? Yep, I was a little bit skeptical, but boy, is it works well. 
uh, this you'll see an example of how I said that uh, I, I, I can do things, but sometimes it's a little bit funky. Uh, <laughs> see it pretty good from there. Your deucer. Yeah, there we go. The, yeah, yeah, transducer right here. So, yeah. you know, maybe it doesn't look so beautiful, but it definitely works. Yeah, on mine, so I drilled a hole right through there, put a through hole, go into a fiberglass pipe, and then uh, I cut off the head of the trolling mud, and it all fit under here. I thought about that, because you could just, you know, fiberglass this in, and then you've got a well. Yeah, basically what I did. I hate hanging just, out there and fiddling. Too. I hate it. And, it, and it, it's not the prettiest thing on the back of a boat, of no. a pretty boat, design boat yeah. like this. And that looks like you gasketed. That put now. a little gasket yeah. on there, and it's it doesn't have any, doesn't leak at all. Put these guys on here. There's a company called Plastique, mm -hmm. and they make these, um, these sort of, they're for putting on your dock and stuff. Um, but what I have is, well, they're, they're inside, uh, but I've got little poles, little mm -hmm. aluminum, like sort of tent posts, and they sit in there, one, two, three, four, and of course you take these out uh, beforehand. I, I know where you're going with and this. And that sits exactly uh -huh. I did that with there. my J24, just because I slept out here sometimes. <laughs> yep, and so I've got a little pup tent and an air mattress. Yeah. And you, it, you have, I don't know, queen size anyway? Yes. And uh, It's fun sleeping on yeah. deck. I really like it. Yeah, if the weather's, if the weather's nice, it's great. Uh-huh. Uh, put this guy in and... Uh, oh, that's cool. Still not leaking. Yeah. Uh, I always kept this uh, uh, bin here just in case. And uh, one day I did leave this open and came back a week later. I did have a little bit of water, but it was all in the bin. So as long as you close it, uh, it works. And but you really needed that. Otherwise, this is a lot of wasted space on the... It's a lot of yeah. space that, you know, unless you have a... I, I would sleep on this side and uh, this was pretty much empty. And now it's great because you can, you know, you take things like your sail covers off mm -hmm. and your tiller cover and I throw them in there. It gets better, watch. See, yeah. so you can move it around and you can put other things in there yeah. too. Okay. You got a 110 system on this boat. Just have it coming through with a split. So if you need to plug anything in while you got an extension cord. Yeah, I would like it. to do that because otherwise I'm running my cord through my yeah. For example, you might, you might want to uh, recharge your EcoFlow or Blue Eddy or something. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like always having cords running in it. So I just popped that in. I couldn't stand having water coming in in the hoss pipe, so this is a little bit crazy, I think. Uh, so what I did is, this is for your gas, right? Um, of course, what I did is I put the chain in here and, and hooked it on. So whenever it's time, whenever it's time, you can hook up the anchor and, right to your plow. and go with it. Yeah. And obviously you want to have that done in advance. But when it's sitting in your driveway, it's hermetically sealed. Yep. I added the chain stopper here. Uh, this is also where the, uh, that's, there's wood underneath uh -huh. here. That's one of two places uh, that has wood. Added the supersized yeah, Marinko solar vent. Oversized which, vent. Yeah, right. which just kept the boat real nice inside. Um, replaced the uh, uh, the mast step. So this is a, this is a Dwyer uh, organizer plate. And mm -hmm. so you can see I got my halyards and things on yeah. there. And uh, it's also hinged. So it makes it easier to take the mast up and down by uh, without having... And you can raise and lower this mast no problem by yourself. Yeah, 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 no problem. A 23 is a three-man job, maybe. Uh, maybe well, a two-man, but... You know, Randy uh, from the Boatnik, he has a mast raising system. He does it himself. These guys I put on here to uh, hold my boat hook, uh -huh. and I made a, um, uh, a whisker pole, oh, cool. which I also keep on there. Uh, we get a lot of really wind, you know, sailing in the middle of the Midwest is really not the funnest thing, I think. People try to talk it up and say, well, it really challenges you. And it does challenge you when the wind isn't blowing at all. And it's 103 degrees. I got knocked down three times sailing in 60 mile an hour winds on Lake Perry. Wow. Yeah, that's not far from here. On a 25 footer. Uh, this year, actually, uh, they had a big... A big storm came out of absolutely nowhere and it got pretty dicey. Eighteen ninety five. Eighteen ninety five. Which I'm from Pennsylvania, that's not too old, but for right. now here it's pretty old. And oh, so, so that's what it looks like. Yeah, so I took that out of the Bayfield twenty five and uh it actually might be a little bit too wide to fit as mm. is in the Compact 23, but uh, someone said that they do drop right in. 
I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm going to use it or not. Yeah. That's uh, the compact. That's the motor I used on the compact. How many horsepower is this? Three and a half. And it pushes it pretty good? Oh, yeah. That's great. It's uh, it's more than enough. Yeah. Uh, for the 16. Oh, 16. Yeah, okay. sorry. <laughs> I don't think that would... I mean, you could move around with the... You could move your 23 around with it as it, long as it, it wasn't doing too going much. Going into a current might... Yeah, uh, or even nice too much thing. wind. Yep. I was using this guy as a tender to get out to the mooring ball. Yeah, no. Um, but it's a little bit clunky. All right, well, that was so nice to meet Chris. Gave me the full tour of both his boats, the 23 and the 16. And I just had so much fun talking to this guy. He's got a whole ship store in the basement of his house, so nicely laid out. Uh, what a cool guy. Thanks uh, for having me out, Chris. What a great trip. I really had fun meeting Chris and checking out his boats. But it's good to be back here in Texas, back on my boat, back in my home.